I have a word for you and the word is don't give it your attention. There are some things that are not worth your attention, that are not worth meditating on. There are some words that are spoken to you. I'm speaking to somebody. You have been spoken to words that are not good. But God does not want you to dwell on those negative words. Do not think about it too much. What you can do is to go to the word of God. What does God have to say about you? What does God have to say on your current condition? Yes, there may have been false statements that have been said about you. As a matter of fact, you may, have been, you may be going through court cases. But do not give it your attention. Do not even think of what you are supposed to say in the court sessions. God will give you the right words. God will speak through you. And listen, the, those that have risen up against you will be amazed at how you will come out of it. Because now they think that they have you. They think that they have cornered you. They think that they have exhausted every weaponry against you. But check this out. The scripture says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Bring everything into the obedience of Christ. Every imagination. Do not allow those imaginations to build strongholds in your life. Now, for those that do not know what strongholds are, uh, I talked about this uh, a few years ago. Uh, strongholds are, are like walls. It's, it's like a fortress that is built up to protect a city from the adversary. Now, the enemy can build strongholds in your mind so that uh, when, when, when somebody speaks the word of God, it is quite uh, not easy for the word of God to uh, be processed in your mind because there is a stronghold. Look at uh, the walls of Jericho. There were strongholds. It was very hard for them to break through those walls. It only took worship. And worship comes from a Greek word, proskuneo, in reverence of, to bow down. Worship is not just a song. So do not think about, do not give attention to those negative words. Do not allow them to build walls that are so high. Walls that uh, will affect you. Do not allow your spiritual life to be affected. That's why you see, I do not easily give in to every word that is spoken to me. I do not allow it. Somebody can, uh, can say something wrong against me or someone can accuse me the following day. I, it's like I've forgotten what that person said. It's because I have learned to train up my spirit to the things of God. There are some things in life that really do not matter. Look at Jesus himself. Jesus is an example for us. He lived an exemplary life. They spoke words that are evil against him. In fact, there was a time when, they, when he was casting out demons and they said that he's casting out uh, a demon by a demon that, which is Beelzebub, the prince of demons. Can you imagine how ignorant these people were? Because they did not understand spiritual things. They, did, they do not know that a demon can never cast out a demon. If Satan is divided against himself, then how can he stand? They pronounce ignorant statements. That's why the, the scripture says that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. It is ignorance. So whatever word that they spoke against Jesus... He did not take it personally. That's why he always said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Because he understood spiritual things. He, he knew that these people were ignorant. The enemy that is fighting against you, that friend that has said things that you did not like, things that you did not do, it is not him merely doing it. It is the enemy attacking you. And we are in a spiritual world. 
we are in a spiritual warfare, whether you like it or not. That's why the scripture says, put on the full arm of God, not a half arm of God, not a quarter arm of God, but full arm of God. Protect yourself. When you look at a Roman soldier, Roman soldiers, I mean those that were I, in those days, they protected themselves. They shielded themselves from war. That's why you see Romans, a Roman soldier would take about, when they are in battle, they would, when, they, when they kill somebody, it would be like they, they would die with a lot of men. They would kill a lot of men. One soldier. Because they knew and understood warfare. Put on the helmet of salvation. Have the sword. And that is the sword is the word of God. Have the word of God with you. Now a lot of people go to war without the sword. It's like uh, a soldier going to war without a gun. How, what do you expect to happen to that soldier? Is that he will die. He will be left defenseless. Yes, you may have the shield, but the shield will still be broken because there is no word. And the scripture says the, word, the sword is the word of God. And uh, when, you, uh, when you look at the faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So there are people who have swords in the spiritual realm that are like knives. And there are those that have real souls. I'm talking about real souls. So the more word that you allow to come into your life, the more well equipped you become in the spiritual things. A lot of people disregard this aspect of spiritual warfare. But listen, what moves God is faith. That's why when they spoke all sorts of words against Jesus, he disregarded them. He did not allow things to just enter his life. Faith moved him. Look at the centurion. He was a man after he was a man under authority, and he would say to this one, "Go," and they would go. He understood authority. Jesus was moved in his faith, by his faith. His faith moved him. So your emotions do not move Jesus. They do not move him. Your feelings do not move him. If you want to move Jesus, it is by faith. And the scripture says, faith pleases God. If you want to please the creator of the universe, use that faith. When somebody rises up against you, do not act like a carnal mind, but be spiritually minded. Do not speak to them angry, but act in love. It is love that rules. Do not hate them. You know, hatred is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. That's how hatred is. And hatred will never drive out hatred. It is only by love. So when somebody else hates you, when they ostracize you, love them. That is the, one of the greatest commandments, love. Love one another. Love your neighbors. Love your enemies. Pray for them that they may receive the king of kings, that they may change, that they may repent from their ways. That's why you see for me, I do not fight against people. I do not fight against those that uh, say words against me, those that uh, falsely accuse me, those that make videos about me, those that uh, even in the comment sections they try to, to, to speak words that are negative, I disregard them. I do not fight against them because I know love will only heal them. Love heals. By you loving, you make a difference. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his son. So love rules everything. Well, I'm running out of time. But I've not run out of good news. Share this video with somebody else. Introduce them to this good news. The good news of Jesus Christ. Let them know that somebody loves them. That somebody died for them. And that somebody is with them. That Jesus is with them till the end. Like this video. With, with your, like this video and comment. Let me know. 
in the pre in the comment sections and uh, sending your prayer requests and until next time be blessed